What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock, what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down why tomorrow is going to be a very critical day for the stock market, a very important day for Neo based off the levels we're seeing on SPY, and why we need to see the market bounce and maybe Neo as well in order for the trend to continue, in order for there to be hope, at least some hope for the bulls. And before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire NEO community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed 5 free stocks plus free level 2 data with $0 in commissions for trading. That's a limited time offer. The offer ends in 6 days. Check it out before they run out that's out of the way let's get on with the video so anyways one of the questions on a lot of people's minds is is neo about to see a nice bounce or is neo about to just come tumbling down very hard i drew out the fact that we had this uh head and shoulders like formation forming potentially a giant head right here on neo this may have been the left shoulder and then we could be seeing a right shoulder but i also mentioned to everyone i can't guarantee that's going to happen the right shoulder could take Neo back to the 11s, but it's going to depend on the overall market as well. It's also going to depend on Neo. Neo has been dropping pretty hard for quite a while, so it is quite, uh, it's like oversold in a, in a figurative way. So it is very likely and very possible for us to get that balance, but I did not guarantee it. Now, I mentioned to everyone in my video from yesterday, if Neo breaks below 10.5, this, this level right here, if we get a clean break below it, we're likely going to fall all the way back down to the low 10s to fill the gap. If not, if we break below 10.8, we could actually try something even better. Now, I, I can't guarantee anything, but I will actually go over some data for you guys to give you guys an understanding of why tomorrow is so important for the overall market and how it could end up affecting NEO. Disney had their earnings. They ended up actually beating. They had some very, very decent earnings that came out. They beat on both revenue and also on EPS. And they are going to be laying off about 5,500 employees. But their, the amount of subscribers they lost from Disney Plus is actually lower than what many people would have expected. So pretty good stuff. The market is still quite greedy. We were extremely greedy. Now we're just on the greed side. And remember, when we see greed at these extreme levels, we tend to see the market form a topping process. I'm going to actually talk more about this uh, uh, a little bit later. I do believe that the market's in the topping process. Is the top in yet, though? That I can't answer just yet, but we're going to find out most likely tomorrow whether there's hope for it or not. For earnings, we have PayPal tomorrow after the market closes with Lyft and a bunch of other ones. But before the market ends up opening, we also have other big earnings like Hilton, Kellogg's, Toyota. That's going to be an, an important one. Uh, make sure we pay very close attention to these just in case things don't go as planned or if they do. PayPal specifically is going to be one of the big ones, so please be ready for PayPal after the market closes. Finally, in terms of economic data, we have jobless claims coming out. That's going to be very important because this could affect how the market moves. The consensus is 190,000. We technically want it to be at or above that. Uh, we don't want it to be way too low, so we have to be ready. Now, as far as NEO goes, NEO had very low volume, so we're dropping on low volume, which is a good sign because the selling pressure is slowly decreasing. We're only down about like 2.47%, a little bit lower than yesterday. And the short volume percentage coming up a little bit, so there are more shorts coming in, so please be careful. We are seeing more selling pressure. NEO's price per ratio coming down as I expected, which is a sign that there's some more weakness relative to the price. But despite that, we are still getting many hold ratings from many new analysts, such as China Renaissance. I also want to note that on Thursdays, NEO is green about 51% of the time. So there is some hope that we could at least try to hold and maybe get a bounce. And we do tend to actually pick up by the third or fourth hour of the trading days, specifically by the time we get to the fourth hour. That's where NEO really starts to pick up typically. So just be ready. It is a slow starter. The short interest has been decreasing. We'll see if that does get adjusted for later. So why is tomorrow so important? Why is it such a critical day? That's because of this. 
This is the SPY chart. All right. Notice how we've been in this uptrend for quite a while on the hourly time frame. But when we zoom in and look at where we close today, we were bleeding today. It was not good. The algos weren't on and the market was showing weakness. Tomorrow we have to bounce. We have to bounce tomorrow for there to be any hope for the bulls. We need to see this thing bounce. If we break below 410, it could get ugly pretty fast. We could see this thing come all the way down to 405 to 406, then all the way down to 400. And if that happens, we're going to see a lot of panicking. So please, please, please be very, very mindful of this and be very careful. Now, we also have a gap that formed today. We did gap down from 415. So I do believe that that gap could get filled. So there is an increased probability we're going to get a bounce. But we have to see it first in order to confirm it. What is good is Tesla's breaking out and broke out of some major resistance. And this thing is trying very hard to continue going. It was slowed down by the overall market, but you could see the relative strength of Tesla really showed. And we got the break above 200. So this thing could keep going from here. But in order for it to remain strong, it's going to depend on other factors. Now, the VIX is also getting rejected off 20 at least many times. If it breaks out, that could be bearish for the market and these rallies we're seeing could slow down. If this breaks out, SPY is gonna come down, QQQ will likely come down, NEO could get smacked as well. But if we get a rejection, if the VIX starts coming down, this could actually attract a lot more buyers, a lot more bulls, and there is potential for the bounce, especially because we do have those gaps above. NEO as well, I think it has a gap right here around this $11 area. I, I don't know if that's going to show on the daily. Uh, I'm actually not seeing it, but it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is I'm anticipating that because Neo is holding up, you have to remember the levels. Okay, if we break below the 10.5 zone, expect it to come all the way down to the low 10s. If Neo breaks 10.8, and it holds it, we could come all the way up to 11 to 11.3 or even higher than that. All right, so that's the bullish and more bearish case, both of them. But what do I think is most likely going to happen? In my opinion, it depends on the market. We could see this still play out because we haven't invalidated the head and shoulders like formation. So because we're still right over here, we still held support, which is the same zone that we saw the initial bounce come from. There's an increased possibility seeing the lowered volume that we ended up dropping on that we get a small bounce tomorrow. That's what I'm going to hope for. And we try to get this gap all the way back up to this 11.3 area. If the stock market bounces, there's an increased probability that NEO will get the bounce. But if the whole, whole market comes tumbling down, that could also affect NEO negatively. So I just wanted to make this as clear as possible for everyone. That's why it is a very critical day that the market gets that bounce. We need to see the market hold or bounce tomorrow because if it doesn't, not going to be the best for many other individuals and in, uh, NEO as well. So anyways, that's what I have for this video. There's not really a whole ton of news that came out today about NEO. Let me just double check that for you. We are seeing some headlines just talking about how uh, just a couple of things about comparisons involving NEO. I'm not really seeing it as too big. But other than that, this is what I'm hoping for. If we get the bounce tomorrow, NEO could get a bounce. We could try to head towards at least 11.3 and maybe form the right shoulder. If it fails at 10.5 and breaks below that, then it's likely going to be invalidated and NEO is going to likely come for this gap fill and come all the way down to the low 10s. So just remember that. What do I think is going to happen? I think I'm going to be optimistic and I'm hoping that we get a nice bounce and Neil makes it back above 11, hitting 11.3 and maybe even 11.8 later on to form the right shoulder. That's what I'm hoping for. And that's what I'm predicting. Okay. So thank you all for listening. I can't promise anything, but I just want to make this as clear as possible. Have a great day, Neil to the moon, since the long-term future is still very, very bright and peace out.